I had a client call me the other day saying that they wanted to translate their website into other languages because they're looking to get into additional markets in a global economy. Well, I wanted to take a look at some of the options that we had available. And I came across GP Translate, who have kindly sponsored this video. But as always, I'm not going to give you any opinions. I will demonstrate how this works and then you can make a more informed decision for yourself. Now, anyone that's actually tried to translate a website knows that this can get very expensive when you need to get translation experts in and AI can do an incredibly good job. Well, that's exactly what GP Translate allows us to do. Tap into AI, tools like ChatGPT and so on, to be able to handle the translation process for us into multiple different languages. Let me demonstrate the site. You can see the kind of thing I'm talking about. This is one of my demo sites. This isn't the client's live site, but it shows you how everything is set up and works. This is the home page. As you can see, everything is in English, as you'd expect. So everything is all set up, ready for translation. You'll see in the bottom left hand corner, we've got this language selector. Currently, this is set to English. But if we open this up, I've translated some of the pages into French and German. So let's say we want this in German. We can click on the German translation and we now have the German version of it. As you can see, everything is translated right the way through to the footer, the header, the navigation, everything. If we take a look at one of the articles on here, you can see again, everything is translated into, in this example, German. Let's say we want to check out the French version. Well, let's choose French from the list. And we now have the French version translated for us. So we've got the German, the English and the French all set up by using AI. Let me take you into the dashboard now so we can see some of the options available, how this whole process works and how you can configure various different aspects. So once you're in the dashboard, GP Translate has its own section. We're going to come in and take a look at the translations to start off with. We'll dig into the settings in a moment because there are an awful lot of settings available to you to configure and tweak things to get exactly the way that you want. But for now, let's just jump into the translations to see what options are available. So here's our translations. As you can see, there's a lot of information here, including the page link, which is the default page link that we have as part of our overall content on our website. Then we have the translated URL if you choose that option. So this is going to help you get better SEO because the translated URL is going to be translated into that particular language. So the keywords and phrases you may have inside that URL are going to be translated into the language you select, French, German, and so on. Then you've got the original and translated, the original language, the translated language, and so on, and also the translation engine. So let's go and take a look at one of these translations. And inside here, you can see this now gives us more information, including the actual translation itself, which if we want to, we absolutely can tweak and adjust. So if there are little sort of things that you want to change in there, you can do that inside here. So first of all, we've got the page link and the translated page link. So you can see there's the English version with marketing promotion. There's the German or French version, depending on which language you choose in. In this example, it's German. Then we've got the original language and the translated language, whether it's published and so on, and the translation engine. Then if you want to, you've got your translations. So there's our original text and our translated text. We can expand this out and see the various different translations versus the original language so everything is there and you can delete this so if you want to remove it you can do and you can sort of edit this you can get it to sort of force it to do it again lots of options to make sure that you get the perfect end result if you want to filter things you can do up here and you can also search if you're looking for specific content inside your translations you can search for that inside you and then tweak if you need to if we scroll down there's also the option for translations for alt attributes for your images. So again, we can make sure that we benefit from the SEO conversion as well. So we've got the English and the German in this example. And you can also do the same thing. You can actually have this as a new feature that's been added very recently, where if you've got, for example, an image that has text in it or something like that, and you want to have a British version, or English version, and a German version, and a French version, you can absolutely do that using GP Translate. So you can have different images for the different languages where it makes sense. If you don't include one, it'll use the original image that you've uploaded. That's pretty cool. So on top of that, if you've got translations you already have, or you've got content on multiple different sites, for example, you can see you can export or import translations. You can migrate translations to other sites. Nice options available there. You've also got filters across the top, so you can filter this based upon the translated language, the translation engine being used. As you can see, there are multiple options here. And you've also got the crawler. Now, the crawler is very useful. So you can use the crawler to actually go off and crawl from the top page, your home page, down through all the various different pages. So if we choose this, you can see there's where we start. So in this example, we're talking about the home page, the actual domain URL. You can start that from here. You can see the crawler status, and you 
you can also export the XML sitemap. So if we click this and start it, that's now going to go through, start on the first page and go through the translation process. And then it'll carry on going through, loading the pages in behind the scenes, doing the translation. So then when someone accesses the website, all the translations have been done for you. No manual involvement required. And if you want to stop this at any point, if you've got a large site, you can do exactly that. But if we take a quick look, you can see the translations are going through. So we've got the French and the German, the French for this one. You can see how this is all going to work. And then we can collect, carry on. And once we're happy with it, all our translations will take effect. I'm going to stop that in this example because I don't want to go through all my site. So now we've seen the basics of this. Let's go and take a look at some of the settings because I think this is where you really can fine tune exactly what GP Translate offers you to get the best end result for both you and your users and also for SEO. So let's take a look. If we jump into the settings section, there's an awful lot inside you, a lot of which you can just leave the defaults if you wanted to get a feel for it. And then when you want to come in and tweak, you can do. I'll link to documentation down below that will tell you what all these different settings actually do so you can see what makes most sense for you. But let's start at the top with some of the key things that I think are important. First of all, we've got the translator settings. This is where you can choose the translation engine you want to use. In my example, I'm using ChatGPT, but you can obviously use whatever you want. So. The options we have at the moment, we've got Google AI, we've got ChatGPT, DeepSeek, or Gemini. And you simply drop in the API key that'll connect up. Then you can choose what model you want to use. In this example, I'm using GPT-5, but you can see we can choose from 3.5 Turbo through to DeepSeek, Chat, Gemini, and so on. Then you've got the request message that's being sent over that's actually requesting the translation that was going to be handled. So this is the default. This is what you're supplied with. But if you want to change this, you absolutely can do. You can tweak this to get exactly what you want. So if you find that the results are not quite where you want them to be, you can come in and you can tweak that. And then that message will be used to generate the translations for you. Then we've got some additional options there to control how your actual content is going to be generated and how you're going to interact with whatever AI tool you're using. So you can set the request conversion role, the maximum number of translations per request and the maximum number of characters per request. So you may want to keep this quite low if you've got a big site so you don't end up having any issues with your connection to whatever you're using to actually do the translation. Next up, then, we've got some basics about what your original language is. In our example, we're using English, but if you were using a different language, you could easily select that from here, and you can see there's an abundance of languages to choose from. Then you simply choose the languages you want to convert into. In our example, I've chosen French and German, but you can, again, add what you want, so click inside, and again, you can see there are lots of options available here. So pretty much everything you should need should be available to you. I don't want to go through every single set in here because I think it will be a little bit overkill and you can take your time and have a look through yourself because you can download the free version of GP Translate, translate a couple of pages, get a feel for it, see the options, how they affect what you're doing. And then if you want to upgrade to the premium plan, you absolutely can do. Link will be in the description down below, so check that out. But as you can see, we've got things like detecting the language, how you want to handle that, whether you want to sort of auto detect it based upon the HTML tag for your language and so on. You can detect the browser language, original first language, and so on. So there's options here for how this is handled as soon as anybody loads a page in. Is it going to be whatever you set up as your browser language or other options? So you can tweak and configure that to get, again, the best result for you. Then you've got your URL rewriting. You want to have the ability to have the language sort of section inside the URL, so D, E, F, R, and so on. I'll show you that in a moment. You can do that. You can also get it, like I've shown you, to automatically generate translated versions of your URL. These are really good for SEO in other languages. So take your time, consider what makes sense for you and the project you're working on, and those options are there so you can tweak and configure them. So if we take a look at the URL for this page, you can see there's our F, R, so this is the French translation. You can see then that we've got the French URL inside here. So all these things are being done automatically behind the scenes if you choose those options in the settings for GP Translate. In most instances, that makes an awful lot of sense. I would recommend doing it. But if you don't want to, you don't have to enable it. Then you've got options for your metadata. Do you want to handle things like translating the met metadata, setting your HTML tag for your language, canonical tags, and so on? Again, you can choose what you think is right for the project that you're working on or what your client actually may need. 
But you can see, as I've already mentioned earlier, we've got translate the alt attributes for images and translate the source attributes for images. So this gives us that ability to be able to have translated versions of the alt tags and also have translated versions of images where it makes sense to do it. Then you also got some other options there for translations and how they handled and so on. So things like with forms and stuff like that, that whether you want to have form attributes and title attributes converted and translated. Then we've got our server side translation option. So whether you want to have this handled on the server side which in most cases is probably the better way of doing it. Now, a lot of times when you do it, any kind of translation is there's going to be brands and names and words and things like that that you don't necessarily want to translate. For example, if you've got a brand like WordPress or in this example, Freelance Fridays, you may not want to translate that because that's the actual brand name. Well, what you can do is you can use the dictionary and exclusions option to choose what words and phrases and things like that that you do not want to be translated. You can simply drop the words in here, separate them with a comma, and they won't get translated as part of that translation process. And you can see you've got different words for different languages. So words to exclude, original language translated and so on. And you can add your own rows inside you so you can customize this and get exactly what you want and how you want to control these kind of uh, exclusions and dictionary words and things like that, which is pretty nifty. And hopefully what you can see is very simple to handle. And finally, we've got some advanced options here. So for example, you've got things like how you want to handle real-time translation. So anything that's in the database and all your translations are stored in your database, whether you want to ignore those and have a live translation on screen at that time. For most use cases, I would say that's probably not what you want to do because most visitors and most content is probably going to be quite static. So once the translation or translations have been handled, you're probably going to leave them as they are unless something changes, at which point you're going to need to redo it to kind of go through and see the changes that have been made. But you do have options for real time translations and various different options then for how you handle that side of things. So there's tons of options to customize and tweak how you want your translations to be handled, how images are handled and all those kinds of good things. There's a couple more things I want to show you before wrapping up though. And that is if we come back up to the top, we've got the reader. So you can have this enable the reader. So you have this read out to you, which is quite a cool, useful feature. Again, you've got a bunch of options inside you to choose how you want this to be handled. And then you've got the appearance. And the appearance is basically how you want the little sort of changer, the language changer to appear. In our example, we've got that in the bottom left hand corner, but you can customize it. As you can see, we can change things like the colors and the fonts to make sure that it ties in and matches to the design that you're working with. So it's kind of integrated into the overall website. You can also change the style settings so you can choose where you want this to appear and how you want it to appear. And then you can choose how this opens up the flag styles, the flag path. You've got language titles then, so whether you want to use the word or just use the flag icon, it's up to you. So this is easy to customize and tweak to get exactly what you want. And there's some advanced settings should you need them to get even more granular on how it all looks. So with a little bit of time and effort, you could easily get this to look exactly the way you want and integrate it into your site design with minimal effort. But hopefully what this has demonstrated is it's very easy and also very, very comprehensive in what you can do by using GP Translate. I'll put links in the details down below so you can check out pricing. Try out the free version if you want to. There's a link to the free version, which you can install from the WordPress repo. Try it out. And if you think it's useful, then you can take a look at upgrading should you want to. But in my experience, this has been really simple to set up. It's given you plenty of options and the translation process is pretty painless using ChatGPT in my example. I imagine it's going to be exactly Exactly the same with any other AI based option to handle that translation process. And then if you want to make changes, update or edit anything, you've got full access to make those changes should you want to. As always, all applicable links are in the description down below. My name is Paul C. This is WP Tetzel. Until next time, happy translating.